So I'm going to give a little disclaimer to this video. We're going to be dealing with some very difficult subjects, grooming and sexual assault. And the reason that I chose to do this subject is that I think that many people don't speak about it because of how painful and insightful it is. If this is too much for you or this is an area that causes you a lot of trauma, perhaps skip this video or if you feel that it's too much don't feel bad about having to stop it just you want to remember that whatever you're consuming inside of your brain leaves an effect and if you're not ready or don't feel comfortable to be able to talk about or hear about this subject don't feel bad about that i'll see you in the next video for what it's worth this is just dear me i swear you're gonna chop me up into little pieces i'd rather not when we talk about grooming behavior and what happens, often the person, usually a person in a position of power, they usually try to isolate the target person, the person that they want to be able to groom and control. He has her alone and she's caged. There's nowhere that she can go. Please just tell me your name. If you want to judge me. Judge you? Why does he even care what her name is? Well, one thing is that when we hear someone call us by our name, it feels good. He wants to be able to slowly break down all of her defenses so that she will start to trust him. And the more that she trusts him, the more that he can bring her into the fold and hopefully have her become a part of his cult. Yes, there are only a few of us that know, but I would have told you. Sooner or later, I guess sooner. But you're special, you're different. And isn't that what we all want to hear? Especially if we've grown up without a parental figure or haven't felt like we belonged or felt like we were a nuisance or too much. And that's a really strong Western cultural phenomenon of wanting to be unique, better and special. And so it kind of speaks to that core, especially when we're going through those teenage years of trying to figure out our identity and where do we belong. It was a last resort. You think it doesn't shame me? But what was I supposed to do? Let them starve? These people who put their lives in my hands? He uses personal disclosure and trying to show that he's transparent. He has flaws to be able to make him seem like the things that he's done are not that horrible so that she can feel more of a sense of trust. People that do this are often very charismatic and actually have great people skills. On the surface, it seems like they're kind and thoughtful and caring. That's why when we're teaching children and young adults, it's so important to teach body autonomy and that it's okay to say no and there's boundaries and consequences to the way that we allow people to treat us. And so Yes, I don't really love it when we force children to be able to hug someone they may not feel comfortable to be able to hug or deal with. Now, I think that you should teach being polite and have proper manners. No matter what age, your voice matters. Who expect me to keep them safe? Who love me? Yeah, maybe. You don't believe that. I don't think your friend would either. Didn't he take another man's life to save yours? Defending himself. He was defending you, but you knew that. And you hear those manipulative kind of guilt-laden words. He wants her to feel bad so that she's not so angry and antagonistic. When we use things like guilt to be able to weaken people's ego strength, sometimes we also make them feel like we'll make them better than they are, that I'll love you more than other people will love you and I see the things that no one else does or I'll protect you where no one else will, which will socially isolate people so that it's easier to prey upon us. These are similar to sales tactics. We end up moving someone one step closer or putting them into a insecure or anxious or angry mindset so that it's easier to manipulate where things are happening so quickly that moment to be able to think that maybe you don't want this and maybe you should do something. Because remember also for us as humans, it's easier for us to stay in the situation that we are than make a change. Change caused risk and risk is scary. And especially when we're a developing young adult, much earlier than just teenage years, so that's why I use the term, but when we're developing our sense of self, we haven't yet learned the things that we can do and we can't. And it becomes really difficult because of all of these social constraints of we should learn to just listen because that's what we're taught to do. Sit down, listen when someone speaks to us, don't break the rules, follow them. And so in this way, Ellie's oppositional traits are a benefit to her. You see a lot, so do I. And you know what I see when I look at you? Me, you remind me of me.
And that's such a common one of, I see my traits in you. And this works really well to be able to create an alliance between people. You and I are the same. When someone says that to us, we naturally have this feeling of liking the person a little bit more because they see beyond me. A lot of us, that's one of our basic fears is that if someone really saw me or knew me, they would judge me or wouldn't like me or wouldn't be good enough. You're a natural leader. You're smart, loyal. Those effusive compliments of, I see the things that no one else sees. And we have such a need to be valued and cared about, especially if we've come from a place where we don't have that kind of home stability. People that groom people are actually seeking out people that have gone through this want or need or difficulty. And they're gonna try to fill this position of giving us what we so desperately want. Not just as young adults though, this also can happen to us in our adulthood. Don't we all want to be affirmed and cared about? This is one of these core needs. People can often prey on that want to feel loved and cared about and to belong. Violent. You don't know anything about me. But I do. If I let you out of that cage right now, put that knife of yours in your hand. And I'm gonna take a moment right now to say, if you've been assaulted or groomed or had someone take advantage of you, that does not mean that you're weak, doesn't mean that you've made this horrible mistake. They're, they're, sorry, getting overly angry. This does not mean that you're weak. This doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It doesn't matter what you wore or what you said or where you went. No one has a right to take advantage of you at all. A lot of times when people are have gone through some sort of sexual trauma or been groomed or are in a abusive relationship, we kind of do that blame game. <laughs> People do it to kind of put a separation so that they can feel like it would never happen to me. It can happen to anyone, the strongest, toughest of characters, it can happen to. Please be careful of when you are speaking with someone that has gone through a really traumatic experience because a lot of those why questions or what happened, like we're so worried about being judged when we've gone through something horrible because we already have that negative self-talk in our head. We've already gone through the scenario and what could have I done to stop this horrible thing from happening to me? And we often feel guilt-ridden or stupid or we've made this mistake and it's us to blame. And so when we ask those why questions, they can come off as judgmental even if you didn't mean it to. You want to make sure that all of your comments are supportive and caring of, I'm really sorry that this happened to you and it shouldn't have and it's not your fault that this happened because it's no one's fault when this happens except for the person that did this. Put that knife of yours in your hand. You'd stick me in a second. You have a violent heart and I should know. What he's trying to say is that we're the same. Don't judge me. I get you. I can see that anger and rage inside of you. He's playing on her own questioning of her identity and saying that these fears that you have, I accept them because I'm the same as you are. What does cordyceps do? Is it evil? No. It secures its future with violence if it must. Why are you telling me all of this? Because you can handle it the way the others can't. And that making her special, putting her onto a pedestal. You are better than other people. They don't get the things that you will. Really classic grooming behavior. Usually this is over a much longer amount of time and it happens really slowly. Slow change, we don't really notice very easily. It's imperceptible to us and so Often it also happens that they desensitize you to sexual terms or situations so that you feel more and more comfortable about being sexual with someone. That part of our brain that deals with consequences to actions is only fully developed at the age of 24. And because of that, they're so much easier to groom at this early age, especially when you're dealing with your identity and want to belong. They need God. They need heaven. They need a father. You don't. You're beyond that. Like what crap, right? But 
Doesn't it feel good when someone says that to you? Like, he's just using it as a manipulation tool, but I fully get that that feels really wonderful to have someone say that, and he says it with amazing amount of conviction. He has all of these really manipulative traits, charismatic, and be able to kind of pull you in so that you feel special to someone. Shepherd surrounded by sheep, and all I want is an equal. And how can even in your head you want to say that, yeah, I'm better than everyone else. Everyone else is like this, but I'm someone special. But I'll say the therapy thing, but in the end, you need to work on feeling special to yourself and be able to be that positive voice inside of you. And yeah, I know it sounds like one of these things that would be on a poster, but it's really true. And the more that you care about yourself and you work on what is the inner dynamics of what happens inside of your head, the better you'll feel and the less you'll have a need for someone else to fill it. What about my friend? I can tell the others to stop looking for him. Really? Yes. If he leaves us in peace, they will just let him go. They do what I tell them to do. They follow me. And a lot of times when you're in this position of feeling trapped, you want a way out. And so you want to find an alignment with the person that might be hurting you. That Stockholm Syndrome, that we can form an alignment with the person that's the perpetrator against us because we think that if we're kind or nice that they might treat us better, that we might not have to go through the horrible things that maybe other people have to go through or they'll stop hurting us if we are more complacent or obedient. And they would follow us. Think of what we could do together. We'd make this place perfect. Imagine the life we could give them. Imagine the life we could build. That ominous O of her realizing what he wants. What I love about this scene is that Ellie is playing on him. She's using her own knowledge of his want for feeling powerful and that he's special to be able to kind of pull him in to get closer to her so that she can grab the keys the same time that he thinks he's actually manipulating her. There's no way out, Ellie. The doors are locked and I have the keys. I think that one of the reasons that it is so difficult for us to discuss or be able to support or care when someone else has been assaulted is that it's so visceral and so painful that we end up going through just hearing about it or even supporting someone so much secondary trauma even from watching scenes and episodes that's why i have the disclaimer at the beginning that can cause a secondary trauma especially people with a lot of empathy or that have gone through similar experiences you end up carrying it back inside of us and that's why I often teach that, you know, you have to watch the food that you eat because it's inside of you, but we also have to watch the media that we consume because it's inside of you. And so you want to be really honest with someone of what you can share and what you can't, and that if you don't know what to say, you can be honest that I don't know what to say. In the end, when someone's gone through something that's very traumatic, there's nothing really that you're going to say that's going to make them feel better, but that you're there for them. And that question of, what do you need from me? How can I support you? And are you okay? Often that feeling of I'm not alone is really helpful and healing because when you go through something horrible, it's very isolating and often we feel alone in this dark place. And that's why for a lot of these things, because they're so heavy, it's probably a good thing for those that find that therapy is helpful to be able to do that with someone that's professionally trained because it's so easy by mistake to say something that can make you feel worse. Other people may not be able to handle it. You don't know what someone else has been able to do. So sometimes when someone else can't handle it, it's not because they don't care. Sometimes it's because they care too much or they may have gone through something that's traumatic in their history that they don't feel comfortable or they're not ready to share either. And so that becomes difficult because we often feel like we've just been abandoned where it might just be that the other person can't carry it. I thought you already knew. No. The fighting is the part I like the most. We're gonna skip through just so that um, this is not, I don't, I don't think that, I don't think that the show glorifies it, but it's just so visceral that I don't want to have, I don't want to cause trauma to all the people that are watching the channel, but I do want to go through the information of the emotions that are involved with it. I think that Ellie 
Bella goes through a wonderful job though of that feeling of rage and anger that happens inside of people often when they've gone through sexual assault or trauma or feeling controlled by someone. That is that feeling epitomized. That whether you chose to fight or not fight, no matter what was your decision, it's about survival. Please don't judge yourself because of that. A lot of how we react after we've gone through something this traumatic is about our self-perception. We go through all these feelings of judgment. We all do the best we can with the tools that we have. And it's such a horrible thing that you never know how you're going to react in a certain situation. So please don't judge yourself because one person reacted in some way and someone else reacted in a different way. You survived. And that takes everything that we have in us and we survived. And that's why I rather like a sexual assault survivor versus a sexual assault victim. That word, you made it through and you're still here and you're picking up the pieces for it. And it's a really difficult thing to do. So try to work on your own feelings of judgment. And that's actually what I do if I'm working with people dealing with trauma. A lot of people focus so much on the trauma and what happened, but it's really a lot of it is about our own self-reflection of how did we handle the situation and our own feelings of judgment and shame and guilt. And that's why I wanted to do, though it's so hard because it's so painful, but that I wanted to do this video because the more that we talk about it, the less that people are going to feel ashamed or that it's something that we have to hide and it's something that there's something wrong with them or that it colors them or that then they are dirty for this. And that's because we don't discuss it. And so though it's a really difficult subject and for a lot of good reasons, I think that it's also important that we open this up so that people can feel the right to be able to share if they feel comfortable to and not to share if they don't want to share so that they know that they're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's okay, baby girl. Look at you. The baby girl part? That was it. Um, that was so perfect. Um, there's never a tissue when I need it. I think that a lot of people would be like, well, why didn't he ask her what happened? And like for people that are more avoidant, they need to take the time they wouldn't be able to share. And, and Joel is similar in that way as well. And so him just holding her and those really beautiful, loving words of calling her baby girl um, and just holding her to, to feel safe, I think was perfect and perfect for Ellie, having her not feel alone. The wrapping her around with his jacket and then kind of like walking and carrying her away is really that beautiful feelings of security and safety. Yeah, and so I think that he did a really good job of being able to be there um, and see her through this. And anything more of, of prying or asking her too many questions, I think that for Ellie and her avoidant attachment type would actually have made her feel worse. Not everyone feels better from talking about things. Some people feel worse talking about it. And so you wanna understand that just because you think that you need to share it and let it out, doesn't mean that everyone else does. We all deal with trauma and pain in a different way. And there isn't one right way from everyone. You don't wanna hold it in if you're carrying it that, but it doesn't mean that for some people sharing things that are painful actually makes them feel worse until they feel ready to be able to share it or Sometimes they don't, and that's okay too. So you wanna be respectful to the different ways in which people deal with grief. So I hope that this video was not um, too much. I often have a debate of like not wanting to traumatize the people that watch the different videos that I bring out, but I think that this one especially was just so important to be able to go through what happens and kind of open it up so that people don't feel so alone. And this is, less of a taboo subject for people to be able to discuss so that people want to be able to share it or get help they feel more comfortable to. Zombies in survival is a fun game to play, but if you want to be prepared to survive in the real world, 
zombies or not, check out today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant makes college-level courses available for everyone. Each course is designed for high-velocity learning to help you stay focused and reach your goals fast. And Brilliant makes learning like a game with fun features that challenge you to compete with yourself and with others, with all the helpful explanations along the way, so you're never left guessing. And Brilliant has thousands of lessons, from foundational and advanced math to AI, data science, neural networks, and more, with new courses added monthly, so you never have to stop learning. I have so far covered their courses on algebra, logic, and geometry, and I found them really engaging, because if the zombie apocalypse is coming, knowledge is power, and yes, understanding the geometry of cordyceps may be just one aspect to staying alive. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash georgiadow or click on the link in the description. The first 200 people will get 20% off of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So just click on the link on the button or head on over to brilliant.org slash georgiadow. Clicking on that button really does help out this channel and I hope to see you in the next video. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below and hopefully see you in the next video.